Thank you for viewing this educational presentation. This module discusses an operation for the prostate called transurethral resection of the prostate, or TERP. The prostate is a small gland situated at the bottom of the urinary bladder, the place where urine is stored. It surrounds a portion of the urethra, the tube that carries urine from the bladder out through the penis. A man's prostate enlarges or grows bigger as he ages. This common, non-cancerous enlargement of the prostate is called benign prostatic hyperplasia, or BPH for short. The growing prostate can cause trouble when it tightens around the urethra, obstructing urine flow, impairing bladder emptying, and causing frequent urgent urination. These illustrations show the prostate as your surgeon sees it through a telescope called a cystoscope. You can see that as the prostate enlarges, it grows inwards, blocking off the flow of urine through the urine channel called the urethra. When left untreated, BPH can lead to a total inability to urinate, called urinary retention, which requires insertion of a tube into the bladder, or catheterization. It can also result in blood in the urine, weakening of the bladder, bladder stones, urinary tract infection, or even kidney damage. Treating BPH may involve regular monitoring of symptoms, medications that relax the prostate, medications that shrink the prostate, combination therapy using both types of medications together, or surgical therapy. This slide gives you an idea of some of the many surgical options that your surgeon has to choose from. These range from office procedures to ablate the prostate, to laser therapies, transurethral resection of the prostate, and finally, to open surgery. Surgery is recommended for BPH patients who are unable to urinate, who have kidney damage, frequent urinary tract infections, significant urinary bleeding, or bladder stones felt to be related to the prostate enlargement. Surgery is also recommended when medications fail to satisfactorily relieve urinary symptoms. This, in fact, is the most common reason the surgery is recommended. As noted earlier, TURP, or TERP, stands for transurethral resection of the prostate. Some surgeons may also use the term TUPR, or TUPR, which stands for transurethral prostatic resection. This operation involves removing prostate tissue that is squeezing around the urethra, or urine channel, and obstructing urine flow. Removing this obstructing tissue opens up the urine channel, allowing urine to flow more freely. This, in turn, allows the bladder to work less hard to empty, which relieves bladder symptoms such as frequent and urgent urination. This slide shows the prostate gland and the urethra, before and after surgery. Urine flows easier once the obstructing prostate tissue has been removed. Prior to undergoing TERP, you will undergo a medical interview or history, as well as a physical exam. You may have blood and urine tests performed, along with other tests as needed, such as electrocardiogram, which is a heart test. Your doctors will review your list of medications and advise you on what medications to continue taking and which ones, if any, need to be stopped. It is important to pay careful attention to these instructions, particularly with blood thinners, heart medications, and diabetes medication. Blood thinners, for example, usually need to be stopped well in advance of surgery. Ask your doctor if you have any questions or concerns about this. Like most surgeries, preparing for TERP simply involves eating a light meal the night before, then not eating or drinking after midnight. Try to get a good night's sleep and relax as best as possible leading up to surgery. On the day of surgery, you will be checked into the hospital and asked to change into a hospital gown. Your doctor and the anesthesiologist will meet with you. Then you will be escorted to the operating room by a nurse. In the operating room, or perhaps just prior to going there, an intravenous line or IV will be started. Through this you will receive fluids and medications. You will be given an anesthetic, which is a medication that blocks sensation of pain. If you are given a general anesthetic, you will be asleep for the surgery. If you are given a spinal anesthetic, which involves passing a needle into your back, you will remain awake, but the lower half of your body will be numbed. Spinal anesthesia is preferred for most patients undergoing TERP. The surgeon will insert a small instrument called a resectoscope up through the urethra and towards the prostate. The resectoscope is used to remove the obstructing prostate tissue. 
These images show how the resectoscope device is used to clear away the obstructing prostate tissue. At the end of the procedure, the surgeon will insert a small tube called a catheter up through the penis and into the bladder. The catheter is connected to a drainage tube, which is connected to a drainage bag. The catheter is also usually connected to an irrigation tube, which allows water to irrigate through the bladder and clear any blood away. The entire TERP procedure usually takes about 20 minutes to an hour. After this, the prostate tissue that is removed will then be sent to the lab for close examination. Your doctor will review the results of this examination with you at your follow-up visit. After surgery, you will probably stay in the hospital overnight or for one to two days. In some centers and in certain circumstances, you may be sent home on the day of surgery. You should feel little pain, although some patients do experience painful bladder spasms which can be controlled with bladder relaxing medications. You will likely notice some blood in the urine, which is normal. It is important to understand that just a little bit of blood in the urine can look quite striking, but it does not necessarily mean that there is significant bleeding occurring. Bladder irrigation is continued until the drainage is felt to be clear enough to stop. The catheter is then left to straight drainage for a period of time, and if the urine remains clear, the catheter is removed entirely. This usually happens the day after surgery, but maybe a day or more later in some situations. Occasionally, some patients are sent home with their catheter in place. If this is the case, your doctor or nurse will teach you how to care for the catheter yourself. In other cases, patients are taught to catheterize themselves intermittently to empty the bladder. Recovery from TERP takes about two to six weeks. You should notice an immediate improvement in urine flow. Urination may be frequent and mildly uncomfortable during the recovery period, but frequency and pain will gradually diminish over the first few days to weeks. It is also not unusual to see a small amount of blood in the urine. Remember, it can look worse than it really is, but bleeding should not be continuous. You may have some blood in the urine for up to several weeks. It is important to keep your fluid intake up once you get home to be sure that any blood clears from the bladder. A common instruction is to aim for 8 ounces of water every 2 hours. You should most likely resume your usual medications once you are home, but check with your doctor for individual instructions. Remember that aspirin-containing products and some supplements can increase bleeding after surgery. You may receive one or more prescriptions at the hospital, and if you do, be sure to take these as instructed. It is important not to strain for bowel movements after a chirp to avoid causing bleeding. Therefore, you should take efforts to keep the stools loose, and you may need to take a stool softener, such as docusate sodium or colase. Ask your doctor or pharmacist if you need guidance on how to keep your stools loose. You may bathe or shower as usual once you are home after a terp. General recommendations are that you should avoid vigorous exercise and lifting anything more than 20 pounds for four to six weeks. Consult your doctor for specific instructions and if you have any questions or concerns following surgery. Sexual activity may be resumed after three to six weeks or as per your doctor's instructions. Problems with erections are uncommon after a TERP. If you are able to maintain an erection before surgery, you should be able to do so after surgery. Most sexual pleasure is expected to be recovered a few weeks after surgery and men typically find little or no difference in the sensation of orgasm. About two out of every three men, however, will experience some change in ejaculation after TERP. Most commonly, men will experience what is called retrograde ejaculation. This means that during orgasm or climax, the semen or sperm fluid goes backwards into the bladder instead of shooting out forwards. Although it may be alarming at first, this should not be a cause for worry unless you are trying to have children. It will not affect your sexual function in any other way. Some men find that ejaculation feels a bit different, but it is certainly not painful. After surgery, up to 10% of men cannot completely empty their bladder. This could be due to weak bladder muscles, a blood clot, obstruction, or the surgery not removing enough prostate tissue. Catheter use and irrigation or flushing of the bladder might help if there is blood. Occasionally, your doctor may need to re-examine you and perhaps remove more obstructing prostate tissue if necessary. Nearly 90% of men 
notes significant improvement of urinary symptoms after TERP, making it the true gold standard treatment for BPH. Studies have shown that no medical therapy or alternative procedure for BPH has achieved as high a success rate as TERP. For patients with predominant symptoms of frequent and urgent urination, these symptoms will improve two-thirds of the time. This slide lists the most common possible complications of the TERP procedure. It is possible that some of these numbers may have improved in recent years owing to improvements in technology. Your doctor may also share with you his or her own experience with the TERP procedure. Less common complications that can occur during the operation include injury to the bladder, rectum, or ureters, the tubes that drain urine from the kidney, and so-called transurethral resection, or TUR syndrome. This very rare complication is caused by excess fluid absorption into the body during surgery, which can cause dilution of blood. This can cause heart failure, confusion, seizures, coma, and even death. TUR syndrome has become a very rare complication because special measures are taken to prevent it. Patients are carefully selected who will be less likely to experience this complication. In the operating room, special fluids are used which are less likely to create problems. Furthermore, patients are carefully monitored for early signs of problems. It is for this reason, for example, that spinal anesthesia is preferred for this operation. In the rare instances when TOR syndrome does occur, special medications and fluids can successfully treat it. The most important risk factor that might increase the risk of complications during or following TERP is prior radiation therapy, for example, for prostate cancer. Some other factors that may increase the risk of having complications include obesity, smoking, poor diet, alcoholism, diabetes, heart problems, and certain drugs and supplements. It is very important that you inform your doctor of any medication you take and any health conditions you might have. To summarize, TERP is a surgical procedure used to remove obstructing prostate tissue, allowing urine to flow better and relieving bothersome urinary symptoms. It is one of the most frequently performed urological operations due to its high effectiveness and low complication rate. It remains the gold standard against which other treatments for an enlarged prostate are measured. This slide lists some of the many resources available where you can find more information about prostate problems and BPH. These current references were used to assist in the preparation of this module. All of these are available through your local medical library or the internet if you are interested in more detailed reading on this subject. Thank you again for viewing this presentation. Talk to your doctor if you would like to learn more about your condition.